Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game into the com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with a couple of pieces of AMD Ryzen 3000 news, also known as Matisse. The first of which is that the 3000 series CPUs are all but confirmed now to support JDEC memory speeds of 3200 MHz with substantial room in the tank for overclocking. So one of the issues with previous uh, Zen based CPUs is that they weren't the best when it came to fast memory support which was a bit of a shame given that the CPUs themselves just worked so well with faster memory. The original Zen CPUs Ryzen 1000 officially supported 2666 MHz and Zen Plus bumped this up to 2933. Although of course you could quite consistently get memory running faster particularly with certain motherboards and also Samsung B dies and some with some tinkering performance would definitely start to go up in fact we did do some experimentation with that on the channel but one of the leaks that I got fed fairly early on actually was an exclusive along with lots of other x570 information was that AMD were officially planning to support 3200 megahertz but once again with support for faster memory just via overclocking and uh, on Twitter we have an image from user Momomo. This image appears to originate from some motherboard vendor and if we explore the image, the image states that there is a dual channel memory support, not surprising given it is Ryzen, and uh, four DDR4 memory slots but critically we have Ryzen series CPUs, which are Matisse, supports 4400 MHz overclocking, 4200, 4266, and so on and so on down the stack. But it also states that, uh, yes, JDEC 3200 MHz. The reason this is almost certainly a motherboard vendor image is, well, A, the layout, and B, at the very bottom, you can see that there is a gold contact in DIMM slots. Uh, line, which is obviously usually uh, something you would associate a motherboard vendor to say to uh, indicate that their RAM slots are of the good qualities. We also have a small update concerning the X570 chipset. I say a small update because much of what I'm about to talk about in this diagram has been discussed a couple of days ago, but this newest diagram uh, actually provides the information in a much nicer way compared to the old one. The old image looked like it was from some type of motherboard vendor as well, possibly something that you would see in one of their manuals, but the latest image has actually been posted by HKEPC, and it looks more like an official AMD slide, and definitely the platform map is a bit easier to read. With Pro Monterey, there was definitely an issue when it came to downstream PCIe connectivity. The X570 chipset appears to address this, and we now we have 16 downstream PCIe 4.0 lanes. Indeed, all of the lanes here seem to be fed via 4.0. There's little to be said that's not demonstrated rather nicely by the image. Obviously, the 3000 series CPU directly connects to the memory inside the system. We also have a direct connection to the USB 3.1 Gen 2, as well as the audio connection. There is a direct link to a PCIe x16, which is uh, generation 4. So this is either a x16 or a x8. It depends on whether you're using one or two discrete GPUs. I suspect that most gamers are probably going to want to stick with one discrete GPU, but obviously your setup may vary. A couple of lanes are also dedicated to M.2 as well as SATA, and then there's also a bunch of lanes which get sent to the X570 PCH, which in turn also connect to various things, including an M2 slot, LAN, uh, USB ports or additional USB ports, as well as uh, additional SATA connections, if that's what's needed. As you're no doubt aware, AMD are leveraging 7nm from TSMC, but the successive generation to Zen 2 will actually be using the 7nm plus node according to AMD themselves. And there's been a really interesting statement from TSMC and that is that they are ready for volume production on 7nm plus. TSMC has improved its 7n 
plus uh, processing manufacturing yield rate to the level on par with its N7 process, said the company, uh, adding that the overall 7NM chip output will ramp up, quote, dramatically this year. This is an article over at digitimes.com. Of course, I'll link them in the description of this very video. And also TSMC on track to move a, to a newer 5NM process to volume production, and that will take place in the first quarter of 2020. That's according to Kevin Zhang, who is the company's VP of Business Development. And accordingly, TSMC will also be adopting EUV extensively for the 5NM process, which it's already moved the node to risk production. Finally, let's discuss some PlayStation 5 news. It's going to be a really interesting next year, I think, for the consoles. I'm actually really excited to see what both Sony and Microsoft are going to be bringing to the table. But one of the things that Sony have confirmed for the PlayStation 5 is that the system will be backwards compatible with PS4 games. And it does that by apparently spoofing the hardware of the older console. Uh, I've discussed that at length previously, but it does mean that almost a perfect backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4 system is basically what Sony are aiming for. To this end, Jim Ryan over at PlayStation has confirmed that if you are wanting to play a multiplayer game that was on the PS4, it will run on the PS5. This is great. This means that if your friend Bob has a PlayStation 4 and you and he really enjoy playing a game together and you own a PlayStation 5, you don't need to worry about keeping your old console. You can simply plonk in the older title and play it with backwards compatibility on the PS5, which is really cool. I kind of expected that this was going to be the case, but it's nice that Sony have officially confirmed this information. And it's going to be really interesting to see how Sony and their one console strategy uh, pays off against Microsoft with what appears to be a two console strategy. There have been a couple of whispers that maybe Sony will go a PlayStation 5 Pro route and I think that that will happen. Uh, I think that it's going to not be at launch though. So I think that we're going to see the PS5 launch in 2020, most likely anyway, that's the target release date. And then maybe a year or two later on we're going to see the PS5. Microsoft though are launching two SKUs. Um, and obviously, all of the specifications we've heard thus far are still up in the air. We don't know, and because the consoles are still in development, it's possible that specs could increase or decrease. I don't necessarily think they're going to be like, oh, we're going to add an additional four CPU cores in, but clock frequencies can go up and down. For example, if they happen to be like, well, you know what, the yields are pretty good, and the cooling solution that we've got here is actually really adequate. Uh, we think that the processes in a typical environment, in like a typical room, is well within the uh, realms of uh, tolerances, we can maybe crank it up a couple of hundred megahertz without too much of an issue. Obviously, they're going to do that. They're not going to want to run the CPU at a lower clock frequency than what they feel they can get away with. Microsoft do have one advantage over Sony, and that is that they can afford to essentially not make so much profit per console and worry about the ecosystem. Oh, and there is a small piece of Gears of War 5 news as well. It appears to be from an official Microsoft source, and it's leaked online, and that is the Gears of War 5 looks like it will run at 60 FPS at 4K. The wording does appear to be not a up to or or 4K or 60 FPS. In other words, it seems to be both simultaneously. So I'm assuming this is most likely going to require an Xbox One X. I guess it's always possible it could be next generation, as it doesn't specify which system it will be running on, but we do know that Gears of War 5 will be on the current generation Xbox, but it's always possible, I suppose, that Microsoft could also launch it on the next generation Xbox as well. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.